integumentary system. The integumentary system, the skin, is involved in protecting the body from invading microbes, mainly by forming a thick, impenetrable layer. Regulating body temperature through sweating and vasodilation and vasoconstriction, or shivering and piloerection, or goosebumps, and regulating ion balances in the blood. Stimulation of mast cells also produce changes in blood flow and capillary permeability, which can affect the blood flow in the body and how it is regulated. It also helps synthesize vitamin D, which interacts with calcium and phosphorus absorption needed for bone growth, maintenance, and repair. Hair on the skin guards entrance into the nasal cavity or other orifices, preventing invaders from getting further into our bodies. Our skin also helps maintain balance by excretion of water and other solutes. For example, the keratinized epidermis limits fluid loss through skin. It also provides mechanical protection against environmental hazards. We need to remember that our skin is integumentary and is our first line of defense. The Skeletal System As the structural framework for the human body, the skeletal system consists mainly of the 206 or so bones of the skeletal system, but also includes cartilages, ligaments, and other connective tissue that stabilize and interconnect them. Bones work in conjunction with the muscular system to aid in posture and locomotion. Many bones of the skeleton function as levers, which change the magnitude and direction of forces generated by skeletal muscle. Protection is a pivotal role occupied by the skeletal system, as many vital organs are encased within the skeletal cavities, cranial and spinal, and bones form much of the structural basis for other body cavities, the thoracic and pelvic cavities. The skeletal system also serves as an important mineral reserve. For example, if blood levels of calcium or magnesium are low, and the minerals are not available in the diet, they will be taken from the bones. Also, the skeletal system provides calcium needed for all muscular contraction. Finally, red blood cells, lymphocytes, and other cells relating to the immune response are produced and stored in the bone marrow. The muscular system. The muscular system is one of the most versatile systems in the body. The muscular system contains the heart, which constantly pumps blood throughout the body. The muscular system is also responsible for involuntary, for instance, goosebumps, digestion, and breathing, as well as voluntary, walking or picking up objects, actions. Muscles also help protect organs in the body cavities. The muscles in your body contract which increases your body heat when you are cold. The act of shivering occurs when the internal temperature drops. Muscles around vital organs contract, breaking down ATP and thereby expanding heat, which is then distributed to the rest of the body.
the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system, in addition to needing to maintain itself with certain levels, plays a role in the maintenance of other body systems by transporting hormones. The heart secretes atrial natriuretic peptide and brain natriuretic peptide, or ANP and BNP, respectively, and nutrients such as oxygen or EPO to bones, taking away waste products and providing all living body cells with a first supply of oxygen and removing carbon dioxide. Homeostasis is disturbed if the cardiovascular or lymphatic systems are not functioning correctly. Our skin, bones, muscles, lungs, digestive tract, and nervous, endocrine, lymphatic, urinary, and reproductive systems use the cardiovascular system as its road or highway as far as distribution of things such as nutrients, oxygen, waste products, hormones, drugs, etc. There are many risk factors for an unhealthy cardiovascular system. Some diseases associated are typically labeled uncontrollable or controllable. The main uncontrollable risk factors are age, gender, and a family history of heart disease, especially at an early age. The cardiovascular system also contains sensors to monitor blood pressure called baroreceptors that work by detecting how stretched a blood vessel is. This information is relayed to the medulla oblongata in the brain where action is taken to raise or lower blood pressure via the autonomic nervous system. The lymphatic system. The lymphatic system has three principal roles. First is the maintenance of blood and tissue volume. Excess fluid that leaves the capillaries when under pressure would build up and cause edema. Secondly, the lymphatic system absorbs fatty acids and triglycerides from fat digestion so that these components of digestion do not enter directly into the bloodstream. Third, the lymphatic system is involved in defending the body against invading microbes and the immune response. This system assists in maintenance, such as bone and muscle repair after injuries. Another defense is maintaining the acidic pH of urine to fight infections in the urinary system. The tonsils are our body's helpers to defend us against infections and toxins absorbed from the digestive tract. The tonsils also protect against infections entering into our lungs. Respiratory system. The respiratory system works in conjunction with the cardiovascular system to provide oxygen to cells within every body system for cellular metabolism. The respiratory system also removes carbon dioxide. Since carbon dioxide is mainly transported in the plasma, as bicarbonate ions, which act as a chemical buffer. The respiratory system also helps maintain proper blood pH levels, a fact that is very important for homeostasis. 
As a result of hyperventilation, carbon dioxide is decreased in blood levels. This causes the pH of body fluids to increase. If acid levels rise above 7.45, the result is respiratory alkalosis. On the other hand, too much carbon dioxide causes pH to fall below 7.35, which results in respiratory acidosis. The respiratory system also helps the lymphatic system by trapping pathogens and protecting deeper tissues within. Note that when you have increased thoracic space, it can provide abdominal pressure through the contraction of respiratory muscles. This can assist in defecation. The organs of the respiratory system include the nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and lungs. Together, these organs permit the movement of air into the tiny, thin-walled sacs of the lungs, called alveoli. It is in the alveoli that oxygen from the air is exchanged for the waste product carbon dioxide, which is carried to lungs by the blood so that it can be eliminated from the body. Digestive system. Without a regular supply of energy and nutrients from the digestive system, all body systems would soon suffer. The digestive system absorbs organic substances, vitamins, ions, and water that are needed all over the body. In the skin, the digestive tract provides lipids for storage in the subcutaneous layer. Note that food undergoes three types of processes in the body, digestion, absorption, and elimination. If one of these is not working, you will have problems that will be extremely noticeable. Mechanics of digestion can include chemical digestion, movements, ingestion absorption, and elimination. In order to maintain a healthy and efficient digestive system, we have to remember the components involved. If these are disturbed, digestive health may be compromised. 